allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, roll call. We've got all five board members present, uh, along with Superintendent Brett Boggs, Assistant Superintendent Blaine Conley, and Jessica McFarland as treasurer. Um, upcoming board meetings, August 14th, 2017, regular meeting, Mentone Elementary at 7 p.m. August 21st, 2017, Budget Workshop at the Administration Office, 7 p.m. September 11, 2017, Regular Meeting, Mentone Elementary, 7 p.m. And October 9, 2017, Regular Meeting, Mentone Elementary, at 7 p.m. We're on to Spotlight on the Valley. Okay, the only thing that we have tonight, uh, Todd, would be We'd like to welcome and introduce for our new employees uh, in just a little bit. I will ask you to approve Andrew Murphy as a fifth grade teacher at Akron Elementary School this year. So, Andrew, we'd like to welcome you to the meeting tonight. Welcome to Tiffany New Valley, although uh, you worked for us last year, I think, most of the second semester. But uh, maybe you want to just tell these fellows a little bit about yourself and uh, just give us some background. Well, I'm uh, Andrew Murphy. I'm a uh, Valley grad. I graduated in 2008. I graduated from IPFL here in December. I took my bachelor's degree in education. I got my teaching license in January. I worked at uh, Akron Elementary second semester last year in the special ed department. I did the maternity leave for fourth and fifth grade uh, for the last half of last year and I enjoyed it and I'm glad to be coming back. Awesome. So officially welcome Andrew. We're, Thank glad, you. we're glad you're here and uh, we look forward to working with you this year. I definitely am. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we do have one new staff member uh, we'll introduce here a little bit later, so I think that's everybody for now. That's all. We'll go on to see uh, items from the visitors. Does anyone have any items? And not too many visitors, so we're sitting good tonight. <laughs> Okay, we'll move on to approval of consent agenda. Uh, number one, approve minutes of June 8, 2017 executive session. Number two, approve the minutes of the June 12, 2017 regular meeting. Number three, approve the minutes of the June 26, 2017 CPF workshop and executive session. Number four, approve the hiring of the following personnel. Dusty Sweet, special education teacher at the middle school. Andrew Murphy, fifth grade teacher, Akron Elementary. Sarah Hoff, third grade teacher, Akron Elementary. And Jennifer McQuinn, instructional assistant at the middle school. Number five, approve the following extracurricular assignments. Tiffany Karatke, girls golf coach for the high school. Number six, accept the resignation of the following personnel. Beverly Perry, instructional assistant at the middle school. Number seven, approve the termination of employment of the following personnel. Samantha Shepard, custodian at the high school. Number eight, approve facility use contract with Beaver Dam Preschool. Number nine, approve the real estate lease with Kosciuszko County Head Start and Cardinal Services. And number 10, approve the appointment of Emily Shouten, Shouten uh, to the Fulton County uh, Public Library Board. Is there anything, fellas, you want to pull out and discuss, or do I have a motion to accept? I'll make that motion to approve seven agenda as read by you. Brian makes the motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. I'll Stan has a second. All in favor by saying aye. 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 Nays. It's passed. Uh, approval of claims and payroll. Okay, thank you, Todd. We have one pre written claim listing uh, this evening. It's dated June 20th of 2017. It's in the amount of $3,200,000. 
$216,955.30. Our regular claim listing uh, is dated July 10, 2017, in the amount of $118,262.39. Uh, we have two payrolls this evening. The first is dated June 9 of 2017, in the amount of $507,000. $917.11. The second is dated June 23, 2017, in the amount of $444,550.64. I submit these claims of payroll for your approval. Do, is, do we have any questions about claims and payroll? Do I have a motion to accept the claims and payroll as they've been read? Aaron makes that motion. Do I have a second? I'll second that, Tom. Adam seconds. Uh, all in favor by saying aye. 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 Nays. The ayes have it. On to the financial report. Okay, you have uh, the reconciled bank statement and the monthly financial uh, report of funds for June 2017. Our receipts, our disbursements are uh, the total receipts for all funds $6,012,000. $27.52. Total disbursements for all funds, $4,457,466.81. Okay, thank you. On to old business. Yeah, the only old business we have is uh, an update on the Akron Elementary School project and our project manager, Brandon Wolf, is here tonight. So, Brandon, what's going on at Akron? Yeah, lots going on at Akron. So, um, had furniture delivery last week um, that went, I guess, a little better or worse as planned. We were only supposed to get part delivery. We actually got everything. almost everything for the entire school. So all the furniture's there. Bad thing is all the furniture's there. So, um, you know, the D-wing, classroom wing is in really good shape. You know, ceilings are in, technology's in, smart boards, marker boards are going up, doors and hardware, carpet's all done, ceiling's done. Um, office area is the area that's been lacking, um, trying to get that a big push to get that out of, out of the space that it's in right now. It, we're, we'll be doing flooring the end of this week in there, ceilings, the grid's hung, so we're waiting to drop some pads, start lighting in there. Um, I have really good news today, we had an inspection on the cooler freezer today and it passed, so we're able to get food out of the storage truck, moved in there tomorrow, so um, Friday was a little hectic because of all the rain we had. We had a couple parts that were missing that the electrical contractor did what they needed to and got there, and they were they were on the roof a couple times during downpour, actually getting stuff installed so we could make sure it was turned on in time and cooled over the weekend, so them and the refrigeration guys went above and beyond what they needed to do just to make sure it was all in. So um, paving, we're supposed to start paving parking lots starting next week. Um, plan is to pave and surface the playground. Um, east side's going to be paved. Basically about two thirds of the east side will be on a binder. We're just going to leave it as a binder, basically the base coat. So that way we can get bus traffic away from student drop off, teacher parking from the west side. Um, west side parking is going to be a little bit of an issue because of the utility companies and not wanting to work with us to get some poles removed. So we actually have a meeting on Wednesday to discuss this with Duke and Frontier. So I've been a month and a half trying to get a pole removed and I can't get anybody to remove a pole, which is right in the new entrance of the driveway. So we're planning, we're getting that parking lot already. So when they pave, they can start paving. It's basically going to be dressing up the entrance uh, to the parking lot. So um, demo in the existing wing that stands going really well, which we keep two thirds of that even when school comes back. Um, new mechanical systems are going in now. <coughs> um, the portion that's going to be used by the school when they come back. Um, has all brand new windows in it, all the windows are done throughout the building, so they'll be have to work with a little bit of not having some carpet, you know, there's going to be some window sills not in, but 
<clears throat> it's going to help speed up the process in the last part of the project to go ahead and get in there and just do the finishes basically. I don't have to worry about doing windows in the middle of fall, winter type frame. So, um, kitchen equipment's all set. <coughs> They're plumbing that, building electrical to that. That's a wear wash right there. So, um, wash stations all. All the stainless pieces are in, and they've been plumbing those as we speak. So, <coughs> the uh, new piece of the reception desk, which is in that area. It actually came in today. We weren't expecting it until next week, but it's in. It's a piece of pipe lumber donated a lot of the wood that it goes on. So, really neat piece that's going in right today. I mean, I'm so here. The Akron sign, the old from 1912, they're in its place displayed now in the display cases. So, um, they look really old, which we're supposed to. But that's the piece that uh, was in the old high school right above the main entrance there. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know if they put the, there's a picture of the 1912. That looks really neat in the display that's case. It's right next to this one, isn't it? Yeah. We, we actually have it fastened on some steel plates. So it's, because it's a diamond that was in the ground. So the way it's, it almost looks like it's suspended in the air in there. So it's a really neat piece in there. Um, it's going to be a push getting started on our southern part of the gym addition and getting that under roof and so we can dry up the cafeteria because with all this rain without having a roof or anything because we had to wait on demo in the buildings it's friday was bad we got we have about two inches of water that tried to run back into the building so how are they going to do that right in there at that entrance are they going to seal that all up or yeah we i'm <coughs> working with Derek to figure out how to get them temporary it in so it'll dry up i mean we saw sheet vinyl flooring in there and there's three or four different patterns all throughout so i mean it's time consuming and you can't be getting water running in there to lay this floor so yeah. it's there's a lot of challenging pieces still left to do, but it's a push. Everybody's pushing. So we have have uh, on-site registration on the 25th and the 27th at each of our schools, and just to help out a little bit, uh, we decided to go ahead and do that at the Akron Public Library at Third Akron. So we'll set up computers in the basement downstairs there. Now, we don't get a lot of people that come in for that. Most people do registration online, but we do get a few that come in and use our computers to do it. So we thought that would probably be better to do it in that location, give these guys a little bit more time, get things done before we start school. Who's doing the paving? Finn and Brown. Finn and Brown does that. No. Then are we putting anything in school? Are we putting anything in there for pipe donating this wood? Uh, any anything showing that they've? Do we have any any signage that well, there's plaques. The show? Yeah, there's plaques and that that we put in. Um, okay. I don't know that we have any that has pipe lumber on it, but I mean that's something well, we can talk about. It's something we can come back and do later. Yeah, yeah, yeah just something that because I, I know they've done the what the stage deal. Right around the stage, around the scoreboard, the gymnasium. Um, There's going to be a quite a bit. feature right inside the reception area, lobby area that they do. I mean, it's and it's a big piece. It's 12 feet long by four feet high. Yeah. That mm -hmm. yeah. it's nice to recognize yeah. them somewhere. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Good deal. Still think we can be ready for school, but we will be ready. We'll be ready. <laughs> Good to go. Don't have a choice. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have any old buildings left. So. Yeah. <laughs> so what are they going to get? Um, I know at the end of the week last week, the basement was still there from the gym, and that's all going to be gone. It's all out. Uh, it's all gone. Tomorrow, tomorrow they're going to be backfilling all that basement. Right? Okay. So. <clears throat> So all the concrete from the previous building, there, that's all? Yeah, covered. they've got a little bit to haul out tomorrow, but I mean, it's it's all basically the dirt right now. Have you ran into any unsuitable soils in any of those areas? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Most of them. 
How far down? How far down do you have to go? Uh, until we, when we pulled out the foundations, there was good fill, but it was under, underneath the good fill was black monkey dirt. Um, right now it's probably three or four feet down over most of that. Um, GME, the testing agency, is going to be on site tomorrow because we're starting to dig out as long as it doesn't pour rain like it does. Um, I'm going to start undercutting for the rest of the addition, basically to come out. and So when we get, we, we go 10 feet past when we do that, so we'll be able to see once we're past there how that's going because we'll be underneath where most of the old building was setting, so we'll have a better idea tomorrow on what it's looking like. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the registration date and time. The 25th and the 27th of July, from 12 to 8. And that's in all of our schools. Okay. Yeah. And we do online registration. <clears throat> that's okay. available right now. But we do still have some people that either don't have access at home okay. or want to come in and use our technology. Thank you. And Akron will be at uh, the public library as well. That will be for the Akron polls. And what, what would be the first day that students can get into the building, the new one? Well, the first student day of school is uh, the 7th of August. August 7th. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. That's all that we're going to do. Okay. On to new. Oh, no. I appreciate the work you're doing. Yeah, it is. That's awesome. On to new business. Approved matching grant from DECO Foundation. Yeah, we uh, were informed not too long ago that the DECO Foundation's board uh, chose to invest in a project known as Above and Beyond Learning Environments, expanding how school libraries meet student needs. Um, the grant was written by our media specialist, Andrea Michael, and it was written to expand the services of the libraries, the middle school, and the high school. Uh, the DECO Foundation has pledged up to $20,000 if matched by the school corporation's funds, donations from the community, or other grant funds. Uh, if funds are secured toward the library expansion project. Uh, some of the funding's already accounted for. Mrs. Michael will be working with Mr. Leedy and others to raise the remainder of the funding uh, in order to take advantage of this matching grant opportunity. So I know they're working on that, uh, working on that right now. But I want to thank the DECO Foundation for that. For sure. You bet. So I will <coughs> ask you to approve that. Do I have a motion to accept the DECO Foundation grant? I'll make that motion to accept the DECO Foundation. Brian makes that motion. Do I have a second? Second. Stay in seconds. It. All in favor by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Yes, thank you, Deco Foundation. That's awesome. On to number two initial consideration of addition and revision to the school board policy number one. Yes, as you know, the legislature was busy this past session and uh, passed a number of new, new laws that impact education in Indiana. So the School Boards Association has uh, provided us with some guidance as to policy, new policies that need to be added or policies that need to be revised. So what I'd like to do this evening is go through those with you and uh, bring them to you for your initial consideration tonight and then bring them back to you next month for, for your approval. The uh, first one that we'll look at is in, uh, it's in relation to the teacher appreciation grants uh, and it's actually uh, will be in addition to school board policy. This is as recommended by the School Boards Association. And uh, this policy is made necessary by the, the legislation that took place uh, in 2017 in the General Assembly. Now the teacher appreciation grants uh, are actually the same thing as the teacher performance grants that uh, we dealt with last year. And uh, the requirements are the same with two exceptions. First of all, the school corporation is required to give a different amount to its highly effective teachers and effective teachers. So we have to differentiate between the two. The legislation says that it must be at least 25% more given to the highly effective teachers than to the effective teachers. Now in the past, the board 
the local board here has cho chosen to use a 30% difference. So that was what I included in our policy. Um, also, the school board must annually adopt a policy on the amount of this differentiation uh, in stipends between the two. So that's something that we have to go back and look at each year. Um, so what I have done is I have provided you with uh, a teacher appreciation grant policy, again, as recommended by uh, the school board's association with the 30% amount in there. And so you have that uh, there this evening. Any, any questions about that one? We usually don't see those monies until, what, February, March? Okay, so it's usually second semester before we see those. Uh, another change in the law uh, is going to result in some significant revisions to our criminal history check policy. And the new legislation has expanded the law on criminal history checks and expanded uh, what they call expanded child protection index checks. Um, you will find that the new board policy or the revised board policy and what I have done is I uh, have taken our current language, the current policy, there we go, and anything that is in red print is new. Anything that has a line through it is a deletion from the previous policy. But you can see it, uh, in addition to the expanded criminal history check now, there is an expanded child protection index check that is also required uh, of our new employees. Yeah, the second paragraph is, is a major change. They now are requiring that the expanded criminal history check uh, be done on each employee once every five years. So in the past, you had it done once, and then that was it. Now the legislation requires that that be done, done once every five years. So that's something new. Um, let's see here. See, it says there that uh, the school corporation is prohibited from hiring an individual who has been convicted of an offense which requires a revocation of a license under state law unless the conviction has been reversed, vacated, or set aside on appeal. So there are quite a few changes to that law um, or to that policy made necessary by the new law. I think those are the the primary changes that I would point out to you. Do you have any questions about those? Okay, I think that's the first one. So here, here. Yeah, okay. And then you want me to go to the next one? Yeah, let's go ahead. Okay, I've just broken up into two since there were so many. Um, one of the uh, revisions that we're going to have to make to policy is to our non-resident student transfer policy. And I will take that. So that. Yes. Okay. Yeah, this is our current non-resident student transfer policy. Again, you can see the new language is in red. Uh, they've added a paragraph here about requests for a transfer made by any school employee for his or her own children. And it uh, indicates that uh, that will be accepted prior to any other requests for student transfer, provided there is capacity in the grade level in the building as determined annually by the school board. And then they go on to talk about a verifiable random selection process, which we've never had to do that because we've not reached that, uh, uh, we've not reached capacity. But that is a new requirement of the law <clears throat> there is also a fifth statement added here under where it says the building principal and superintendent may deny a transfer based on a request based on one or more of the following criteria. They've added a fifth criteria to that, which is the student has a history of unexcused absences and based on the location of the student's residence, attendance of the student would be a problem if enrolled in the school corporation. Occasionally, if, if you have somebody that's coming as a non-resident, they live 30 or 40 miles away, um, 
unless those parents are real faithful, they're you're going to have to bring more attendance sometimes. So um, that allows schools to deny requests based on just on distance. So those are the changes in that policy that are recommended. Let's see what else we have here. Um, another one is to our school age child care program. And that is this one. And uh, about the only change there is this, this uh, policy before was for students in grades K through K through six. And with uh, so many schools doing preschool now, uh, they've added preschool to it. So number two there is, uh, says provide child care for children enrolled in schools preschool and in kindergarten through sixth grade, whereas the law used to just say kindergarten through sixth grade. So they've made that change. Um, it refers to a latchkey program. Basically, that's an after-school program, which we have after-school programs in both, both of our elementary schools. Uh, we have one here at Mentone. The after-school program at Akron is, is provided through the, uh, the Church of God in our town. That would be primary change there. And then the uh, last one is, I think, probably uh, the biggest change. And this is uh, a new policy on reporting child abuse and neglect. And uh, the way it reads now, the new policy, is that any school employee who has a reason to believe that a child is a victim of child abuse or neglect shall immediately make an oral or written report to the Department of Children's Services or to local law enforcement. After the report's been made, to the school employee shall notify the school building principal. Um, okay, now, after the report's been made, the school employee shall notify the school building principal a report of suspected child abuse has been made to the Department of Children's Services or local law enforcement. The, the difference there is, in the past, by law, we've been required to make that report to the building principal. And then they, in turn, turn around and make that report to the Department of Children's Services or local law enforcement. The legislation now has turned that around. The individual that suspects abuse or neglect has to make that report directly to DCS or law enforcement. Then, they go to the building principal and report. We have made a report so that they're aware of that too. So that's something that's a, a major change that we are going to have to make sure that all of our employees are well aware of. Right. Does our resource officer, is he considered law? Um, so, I mean, do we, can we report it to yeah. him like right away? He yeah. fills out for so that that same day basically we can go to the building principal. Yeah. No idea. yeah, and I would imagine in most cases that's probably what we would do make that report directly to him. Yeah. He is a law enforcement officer. He is a law enforcement Qualified. But, yeah, since it says law enforcement or agency, I think yeah. he would qualify that we can report that fairly quick. Most definitely. So that is, that's it as far as the report policies that either need to be revised or added for this year, so I'll bring those back to you here in uh, August for your approval. Awesome. Do you have any other? We do. New business. You guys oh, should have. have uh, yeah. We've got a, a piece of exciting new business here. Um, approval of Chad Craig, principal at TVHS. <clears throat> do I have a motion to? to uh, Accept Chad as our new principal. I'll make that motion. Adam makes that motion. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Aaron seconds. All in favor by saying aye. 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 The aye is ever. You've got us a new principal. Anything you'd like to share with the group tonight, Chad? Just, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's an honor to be even considered. Uh, I'm really looking forward, super excited. Uh, it's nice to meet all of you. Uh, look forward to building relationships and uh, just becoming a member of the of the family here, and uh, just can't wait to get started. Thank you very 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 much for the opportunity, and ready to go to work. Welcome aboard. Yeah, welcome aboard.
This is Anders and Leah. I think that uh, Aaron probably has a press release that he'll give oh. to you that, that has some information you. for you, too. So it's ready to go. Well, good. If there's nothing else, we are adjourned here this evening. Thank you for coming.